What's going on guys and welcome back to another Simple Saver Metrics video. Last week I asked you guys to send in any of your questions that you have about my job, about Simple Saver Metrics, or just baseball in general, and you guys came through. So today, I'm going to go through and answer all the questions that you guys sent in for this Simple Saver Metrics question and answer. So our first question comes from Patrick. And Patrick asks, what steps did I take to get to my position and do I have any advice to share with anybody else looking to follow a similar path? So I've talked about it a little bit on the channel before if you go way deep down into some of the older videos, but I started out my career in baseball as a student manager at the University of Iowa. Through that experience, I learned a ton by getting hands-on experience, doing exactly what I'm doing in my position today. I worked with a lot of awesome people and learned a lot of awesome things in terms of the realm of player development from a school that was really relying on some of this information to make some changes and see the success they were having. While I was there, I did a ton to continuously network, not just with the coaching staff and the managers and anybody else that I was working with here, but getting connected with different area scouts and reaching out to people on Twitter and LinkedIn to just hear more about what jobs are available in the baseball industry. From there I used some of those connections that I had made over my four years there to reach out to a bunch of people I had gotten connected with to see if anybody had an opportunity for me to interview down at the winter meetings in Las Vegas in December 2018. From there I was offered a job with the Orioles working in player development with their low A team in Aberdeen and at the end of that season one of the coaches that I worked with at Iowa, Sean Moore, was actually probably hanging out in this office right up here, was the volunteer hitting coach when I was at Iowa, had actually accepted my position with Penn State before I started here. He got promoted to hitting coach here, and when this position opened up, he reached out to me, seeing if I'd be interested in putting a good word for me, and the rest is history. All right, next question's a good one from Tanium in the YouTube comments from last week's video. Tanium asks, what communities are there out there for me to go and talk about baseball? To be honest, the first place that I'd recommend is just Twitter. Twitter is a huge hub for baseball information if you're following the right people. So one, if you're looking to get connected with other Simple Sabermetrics members out in the community, Leave your Twitter handles or where you can get a hold of each other down in the comments below and you guys can start interacting. But two, there are a lot of awesome people that you can follow on Twitter and I'll leave some suggestions for some people that you should follow down in the description down below. Otherwise, there are some communities on like Reddit with uh, like r slash baseball and r slash sabermetrics that do a little bit of work in terms of communicating about baseball. If you're looking specifically for player development and how to get jobs and whatnot, I'm not really sure if there's a better place out there than, than just Twitter. But perhaps we'll have to start a simple sabermetrics Reddit to start some of those conversations, get you guys together. And to be honest, that's one of my favorite parts about starting this channel was the ability to be able to create a community of like-minded individuals. So having an idea like this for you all to be able to get connected and talk more about the sport would be something I'd definitely be interested in help coordinate. So if that's something that may interest you guys and you're an active Reddit user, either reach out to me on Twitter or let me know in the comment section down below if you'd be interested in that. All right, our next question comes from what looks to be Derpy Bills on YouTube. This person asks, how did I first start learning about baseball analytics? Well, to be honest, this whole YouTube channel was inspired by my time at the University of Iowa. I had resources in our coaching staff and some of the different connections that they had to learn a ton doing hands-on work. And obviously there's a steep learning curve to that. But one of the reasons I started the channel was whenever I wanted to go online to try and find an answer to a question about any of these basic level things, I wasn't able to find anything. So the YouTube channel was kind of my way of giving back to hopefully help flatten that steep learning curve that some of you may have if you're looking to enter into the baseball community. Obviously, Obviously, I've come a long way from the beginning in terms of what I was capable of doing in my understanding of the technology to where we are now. And that's why I try and give back as much as I can in terms of the actual applications of what we're doing here at Penn State and what I'm doing just in my career with all of you guys through videos like these. This is actually a two part question. So the second part of this question was, if I could go back one year or one decade in baseball history to apply the things that I've learned now, what would that time frame be and why? And that's another great question. I think the thing that I've become most comfortable with is working with the ball tracking technology. And if I were able to kind of go back to the start of when this stuff just started getting implemented in the early 2000s with Pitch FX, or once TrackMan hit all the MLB stadiums in 2013 or so, that would be a great time period for me to go back and just apply a lot of the things that I had and kind of cut out all of the learning trial and error period. Jensen asks, what did I major in school? So, like I've said, I went to the University of Iowa and I spent a lot of time working with a baseball team. My actual degree was in sports and recreation management. And what that entailed really was a lot of real life experience 
trying to understand what sports business professionals do. My mentor through that program, Dan Matheson, used to be the director of operations for the New York Yankees, and he actually had some experience as a student manager himself. So he was a great resource to me throughout my college experience, and he gave me a really great understanding of what it takes to make it in this industry. I had a minor in business administration, so I did work on some technical things while I was in school, but a lot of the skills that I learned in terms of baseball analytics was just from using TrackMan data and trying to extract value out of it in practice for our coaching staff and our players. Travis then asks, what are my recommendations on good sites to go if you're interested in seeing free public baseball data? There are some ones that I mentioned on the channel a lot, including Baseball Savant, Baseball Reference, Fangraphs, and Brooks Baseball. Those are kind of the big four in terms of the dashboards kind of already made for you. Baseball Savant is the top tier. It's gonna give you the most amount of information in terms of custom dashboards that you can mess around with, extract different variables, download them into CSV format, and really dive into this stuff with. But if you're looking for raw data, I'd recommend Retrosheet and the Layman Database, which are two older websites that are currently kept up to date with great play-by-play -play data and a bunch of other stuff. So links to those in the description down below. Our next question comes from Matthew. Matthew's down in the comment section a lot, so I appreciate the question, Matthew. Matthew asks, should you focus more on individual development or team development, as in scouting reports and whatnot, if you're working at the high school level with limited amounts of data? And my answer to that question is do as much as you can. If you have access to do any sort of scouting reports, that'll be good practice as you continue to grow through the game of baseball. College is gonna have a little bit more resources than high school does. Professional baseball is gonna have more resources than college does. So being able to do with what you have is a great skill to learn. Learn, especially early on if you're managing for a high school team. In terms of if I would prefer individual or team, I think that you probably find more value in terms of getting your team better by focusing on the individual aspects that your players can bring to the table, especially if you have bat sensors or Rapsodo or anything else like that. But overall, just get experience learning about what they do in college and professional baseball. Try and apply as much of it as you can in high school to be able to bring some of that stuff with you as you enter into college if you're looking to work with a college baseball team too. After going back to edit some of this stuff, I realized that Matthew left kind of a two-part question asking about what diamond kinetics metrics were important to use on both the pitching and hitting side, because that's something that they have access to. This question would be easily answered by reviewing some of the videos that I've done in the past in my collaboration with Diamond Kinetics, describing what all of their metrics are and why they are important. The unfair answer is that all of the metrics are important in a different way and learning how each of them works is important to understand why one athlete may be struggling in one area and how working on this metric can help them improve in another. So go and check those videos out. Links in the description. All right, now we're gonna hop on over to Twitter to answer a couple questions that you guys shot over. First question comes from Adam and Adam asks, do I play fantasy baseball? And if so, what do I look for in players? And that's a great question. I have played fantasy baseball in the past. More than any other fantasy sport, baseball has a bunch of different league formats. It's gonna really vary what you're looking for in players, whether it's a keeper league, head-to-head -head matchups, points. There are a bunch of different variations. So my experience comes from working in kind of the head-to-head -head matchup on a weekly basis, which is a little bit different than some of the other formats you may be talking about. But in head-to-head, -head, the biggest piece of advice I can give is when you're looking to build your team, don't just draft the best players available. You should be drafting the players that are most similar to one another. So if you have a high power team that strikes out a lot, well, you're probably gonna win the home run category and slugging percentage, for example. Fantasy baseball more than ever, since it's such a long season, takes a lot of attention and working the waiver wires and understanding what aspects are gonna make your team continuously improve and be better over the course of the season. So I found, especially in baseball, the people who are just checking their team most frequently are normally gonna have the more success. Then another good question from Adam on Twitter. He asks, who is my favorite MLB team and how do I feel about their current performance? And that's a uh, great question. I am personally grew up a Cubs fan, so saw some downs, got some ups, saw some downs, finally won a World Series when I was back in college and obviously we're going down again. So my personal feelings on a pretty, a pretty monumental trade deadline for this organization is Although like emotionally being tied to a lot of those players that helped bring home the World Series, the first one in my lifetime, my parents' lifetimes, it hurts as a fan, but from the business and baseball aspect, it makes a lot of sense to me. Got a couple questions left. This one comes from Muds on Twitter, 
and he asks, what's the best way to manage at a high school level? I kind of touched on this on my last answer, but I'm just gonna reiterate, the best way to manage the high school level is to get as much experience as you can. That could be just with the flow of practice and how your coaches are doing that stuff, learning how the schedule works and travel, or if you're talking about more of the baseball operations side, looking into, does your team use any technology? If you have a Rapsodo or bat sensors, become the person that knows all the answers about how they work, being in charge of charging them, understanding the data that gets come out of them, understanding the data that gets spit out from them, and then being able to share that with the coaches and the players. Just learning early and as much as you can about the sport, the new technology, and the way everything works is my number one piece of advice if you're in high school trying to figure some of this stuff out. All in all, guys, I hope you enjoyed today. I think that these question and answer format videos are something that I definitely want to continue doing in the future semi-frequently just because it's a way for me to help interact and answer any questions that you guys may have specifically about the baseball industry, the YouTube channel, and anything else that's going on. So I appreciate you guys watching and if you enjoyed today's video be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.